Check engine light on? Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free and provides a report with solutions based on over 650 million vehicle scans verified by ASE certified master technicians. And if you need help, we can recommend a shop for you. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. <laughs> no music. No intro, another episode, preview episode, hashtag Saints Twitter podcast. I'm just, I'm just going to start off, Ryan, just from the jump. Let's go down the list of the Saints that will not be playing on Sunday. Whew. First, Jared Cook. He got injured against the Packers. Growing injury. Mm. I want to say I want to save his I want to say the next one for last. Janoris Jenkins, starting cornerback, out. Marshawn Lattimore, starting cornerback, out. Andres Peace. This <laughs> <Out. laughs> <laughs> Um, and then Michael Thomas, who who got two limited practices in last week, was on limited basis all week. This week, he's out. I think that's – you already you commented it on Twitter. I think it's a very great decision that he's not going to rush himself back and play. Yeah. Um, I applaud the Saints coaching staff and Sean um, for holding him back, you know, because I'm sure he's uh, – we know Mike. He wants to play, especially with the team being yeah. one and two. Like, he wants it. You know um, it. And then our boy, two first, or as Greg Rosenthal referred to him <laughs> – Two first round picks. Two first round picks. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the most Greg Rosenthal thing. <laughs> Marcus Davenport thought he was coming back. You know, last week he got the limited practices in. He got two. No, he got one limited practice in this week. Boom, no practice on Thursday. Boom, no practice on Friday. Not playing in the game since this Saints renaissance has happened with that 2017 draft class to me this is the biggest mistake that the the coaching staff has made you know in terms of the decision wise like come on man like and in theory you would think that even with all you know the, the, the Lions are not a good team like anything that Matt Patricia coaches is not good but with the way the Saints have played I have no idea what's going to happen on Sunday I would not be shocked if they lost. Talk to me, man. I mean, going into the season, you know, this was probably checked off as one of those either a gimme win or a game where you just hope the Saints don't play down to the level of a lesser team. But, like, no, nah, this is like – I wouldn't call it a must-win game, but it's like that notch below a must-win game. Like, and you don't really know. <laughs> no clue. They, they, they got to go out and win this game, man, because they both won and two. Uh, you know, we can argue about the talent all we want, how, you know, the talent on paper is better, even with the injuries. But the Saints just haven't played that way. I mean, they just haven't, man. And, you know, you can argue all you want, but the Saints just have not played good football. They're great players. They're good players. They have not played good. And on top of that, now you you banged up. You know what I'm saying? Your key players, like you hurt. Mike Th- like Mike Thomas, okay. We we know about that, but that's a huge loss. Jared Cook, like that's like your dogs on offense. Jared Cook, Mike Thomas, and Alvin Kamara. Thank goodness, Alvin Kamara is. I mean, he's like he's looking like offensive player of the year type, good so far. You know what it's I'm unreal. saying? Like, it's like that's how they like. If you want to take a positive out the season so far. It's Alvin Kamara. He just yes. he's just been outstanding. So, you know that gives you a chance. And you know, but yeah, man, like I, it's hard to like Greg Rosenthal. He he uh he predicted the Lions win. And you know, I mean, hey, you know, I mean, it's just a prediction, but that's just where where it's at. Like you can't even be mad at the prediction because it's like what the Saints have put on tape so far. You could easily see the Lions winning. Greg had the gall to even text me. Before he made the pick, he was he was, he was texting me today, Ryan. 
He's like, nah. He's like, man, I think I'm gonna go with the Lions. And I said, I think you should. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and that's not was, me. That's not me. Like, hoping that the Saints lose. I just, I'm just, I'm just going with the empirical evidence has shown. Right. I mean, come on, man. Like, the Saints have not. Let's just. I mean, let's put the. All, I mean, all the talk has been about Drew Brees. Come on, so man. Far, he, which is like, understandable. He put up the office put up thirty points last game. Like, right, I, like right. it, the the offense may not be pretty. It may not be humming. It may be clicking. But the right. defense has, yeah, un- it's, it's the probably defense. been the st- the story of the season. Like going into this season, what was it? You know, the all training, all off season. It was like best team on paper, second secondary stacked, veteran team. They should come come in the the season, hitting deepest, the ground, running. Deepest secondary in the league. Deepest secondary out here. Uh, you know, Marshawn Lattimore saying, yeah, I know what I you know. I, yeah, I know I took off a little plays here and there. I'm coming in slow. You know, Marcus Marcus Williams, I, I, I know my issues now. I need to be a better tackler. He's coming in. You know, you got Malcolm Jenkins in there, the leader. He's going to fix all the communication issues. None of that shit worked. <laughs> it, wor- it, worked for, it worked for one week. One, one week. week, one, and, we one was, week. And, we, and we was hype. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, you know. So that is the major key for me. And I guess we could just kind of break down if all, defense in general, just trying to go through what, you know, what's really happening here. Because we could talk about the Lions, but really this game is about the Saints. Like, I – I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to downplay the Lions. I mean, they beat us, but I'm just saying this this game is about the Saints. The Saints need to play their brand of football and play up to the level that they can play at. Like, we've seen it. Not so much this year, but we've seen it. So I feel like this game is really about the Saints. Kind of like, you know, kind of like uh, when the Saints played the Dolphins. That was 2017, the whole Crawley. Yes. You know, in the game and all that stuff. Yes. Kind of like, you, know, you just got to, you got to play your game, you got to put it together and just get a win. You know what I'm saying? Speak, speaking of our man, Mr. Coffins. Call he, the clamps. Uh-oh. He'll, he'll the Packers squad. And we know, I mean, we, we can't say we know, but I know the better call up. Oh, he, oh, it's, it, it, he is going to be on the 53 on Sunday. <laughs> You're getting that call, it, boy. It, it, you, like, we know it's coming. So with that said, you got Crawley. So the so the starting cornerbacks are going to be Patrick Robinson. He he got to earn that check, <laughs> and he, PJ Williams. And we know our boy PJ don't do well outside. Like we've seen, nah, we've seen, we, we we see PJ outside. We read that book. We read that book. We know we know how the story ends. Um, but the it's, Washington kid. You know Keith Washington, but the the thing the thing about it is, it's when you were on a Twitter kind of little rampage, and it was great talking about the issue with the defense. Is what Dennis Allen wants to do is predicated on pressure. That quarterback, if quarterbacks are under pressure, it allows the corners to cover longer, or allows or makes quarterbacks makes throws and decisions quickly that they don't want to make. And then you have the cornerbacks and secondary to take advantage of that, which leads to – like, we saw it in week one. Like, week one is a perfect example of that. Perfect example. Pick six, the Marcus Williams interception, like, you saw it full form. And with the – there's just been this – besides – honestly, let's be real. Besides Trey Hendrickson and a couple of, you know, Demario Davis blitzes, or maybe some, you know, Malcolm Jenkins blitzes, like the pass rush has not been there. It's nothing. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but uh, the pressures are down, the hits are down, sacks are down, everything is down. So, you know, obviously uh, key number Uh one. Uh Uh-oh, we hear you, Bree. Sang it, girl. (laughs) We hear you, girl. (laughs) Yeah, she back there blowing. Get it, girl. She got her headphones all blowing. (laughs) But uh, obviously, you know, the first person we look at is Cam Jordan. You know, he's had double-digit sex, you know, multiple years. So it's like, what's up? He has zero sex so far. It's like, what's going on? 
you know, is he has he reached that plateau in his career where uh, he's not, you know, he's start, starting to hit a little decline, you know, what is it? You know, and, you know, Nick Underhill did a pretty good study, a pretty, pretty good tape study just showing what he's been dealing with. He's been getting a lot of attention. You know, it's, it's multiple things. He's been getting a lot of attention. The corner black, cornerback play has, hasn't been great. We face teams that get the ball out quickly. Uh, he doesn't have much help on the other side. I mean, no disrespect to Trick or Trey. Part of that's part of the reason why Trick or Trey has been eaten. Right, because, because all the attention is all the attention is diverted to Cam, and so he has one on one opportunities. He has one on one opportunities. All he has to do is win, beat his guy, and he wins. So, you know, it's just all that, and he just had got there. Like maybe you know if. If the quarterback holds the ball like 0.5 seconds longer, it's a sack. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of those situations. But, you know, he has to get better. Like, the whole defense has to play better. Like, it's not one guy. It's the whole package. It is. The only, the only two people maybe you can say they're playing well on defense, DeMario Davis and, and Trey Hendrickson. Like, that's it. That's it. Like, and Trey Hendrickson is, like, playing above his, like, big. Right. right. So, yes, he is. We asking too much of the little dude. Like you need a day off. Like you know, you know take Trey needs a yeah, PTO. <laughs> Pick your little pick PTO man, go to the movies or something. You know, he played above his pay grade, bro. You hey. know, you need big Sheldon. Hey, big rank. Need big rank to get up in there, man. man. Rank almost got traded. Boy, you need to play. <laughs> like if you go if you if your name were in trade talks before like the cut down. Like you would think that for such a big season for him, like a contract year, like even if it's not if it, even if it's not for the Saints, man, put some tape out for like teams to sign you next year. Like at least yeah, go man. ham. Like nah, n- nothing, 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 nothing. You know, uh, you know Malcolm Brown, Onyemata, he's been hurt. I think he's back this week. Uh, I, I don't. I, he I, is. I, I, yeah. He's okay. Back. So that's a big help. Uh, so yeah, I mean it, it's. The pressure reverberates throughout the defense, man. And if the pressure is not on the quarterback, then your cornerbacks are covering, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. Once you get the three, it's over. It's over. I mean, it's over. The wide receiver is going to win because that's just how it is. I don't care if you play zone, you play man, man doesn't matter. You cover four, cover three, whatever. You know, it's – It doesn't matter. So, and then we, we're going to go up against a quarterback. You know, Matthew Stafford, he has Galladay back. Galladay, uh, Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones. T, I mean, I'm not a big TJ Hawkinson fan, but after their performance against Darren Waller, like, ugh, I don't know. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's funny because, like, the, the, uh, the little subplot that the Saints are playing against Adrian Peterson, like, is, is like, non-existent. Um, <laughs> and Matthew Stafford always plays well against the Saints. Always. Always. Like, please remember, you know what I'm saying? Like, every, every single time. He is not scared of the Saints defense. He's gonna uh, come in, and we're gonna be in his house. He gonna slay it. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, I and I, I hate to belabor this point because I feel like I'm beating, killing, shooting a dead horse multiple times. If the pass rush is so poor, I need, I need, I need a coach. I don't, I don't need a beat writer. I need a coach, to, or maybe I need a beat writer asking. The question of why cannot why can Zach Bond not get on the field? Man, I'm not say, like I'm not saying put him on the field as an off the bomb off the ball linebacker, but can you at least put him on third down on like obvious pass rush situations because he did that well in college? Why like, I I don't under like saying saying hey go get the quarterback like you don't you don't, like it's it's a very simple concept you know if you're not comfortable with him playing like full games or whatever, that's fine. But there's no pass rush. He's not getting any playing time. He's a third round pick. Come on, man. Come on. I mean, I guess my only theory is, you know, it's a little, I'm not saying he's, you know, Stephon Anthony, but maybe he's just having a tough time. But you, like you say, rush the pass. So it's rush like, like that's it. Rush the pass. It's the, like third, third and eight, third and 12. Do you nothing mean, but rush the pass. That, that's it. <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't even, I like, I'm not asking a lot. But I, it's very perplexing to me. So, go ahead. No, I was just saying, you know, Dennis Allen, Allen talked today about, you know, how, you know, you know, our coaches talk, oh, it's all on me. I need to do a better job, blah, blah, blah. Simplify things. He said simplify things not so much as 
simplifying the scheme, but simplify how we teach them. So I mean, I don't know what that means really, but okay. Uh, so I think you know maybe the coaching just coaching staff just kind of needs to take a step back and just get down to your bread and butter, man. You know, get after the pass. So we don't need so much. Like if someone asked me, what you know, hey, what do you, what do the Saints run? I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> Cover four. They, cover they try. Three. They try to run cute, cute deception and end up getting burnt. <laughs> man to man, uh, you got you know you got uh, you got Demario Davis, you know trying to check every play, which you know it was awesome. Like the little video from Yo, the game. That was, like, that was some film, but that just reminded me of John Vilma right there. I was like, that man. was football porn. It was that, that like, and, that, and I tweeted it as soon as it happened, like. And that's the things, like, I look out for. Like, if, if you don't remember what Ryan and I are talking about, so in the game against the Packers, the Saints were blitzing from the left side, left side if you're, if you're the Packers offense, and, and they showed it too early. So Aaron Rodgers saw it, and he was changing the protection, or he was changing the play to account for the blitz that was coming. And then you had Demario Davis realize what happened. So basically what he did is he changed – the blitz to come, he bought, he, he audible and he switched, he switched the side for the blitz to come on the right side rather than the left oh. side. Bruh. Oh, oh my God. That was <laughs> like, beautiful. Man. That was beautiful. Oh, oh. And I, I, and it's funny too, cause that's one, like I saw it and I was like talking it out, like when it happened and then like, you know, Chris yeah. Collinsworth did a really good job of, of explaining it or whatever. Um, and listen, uh, shout out to our boy, Kev, you know, who basically said, if you have Ken, you know, Kenny, Kenny Galladay or Ma- Marvin Jones in your fantasy lineup this weekend, play them. Yes. Play them. <laughs> play. Because, uh, you know, I mean, this secondary, man, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I really don't know what you do. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, my dude, Ralph, Ralph Marlboro, I, 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 I think you have him blocked. Oh, big, big block, <laughs> but continue. He <laughs> could block Ralph, man. Ralph been... <laughs> Ralph been writing that little WWL column since I've been alive, man. Do you know that last year Ralph had the audacity to say? I know, that, I know. I, okay, you know what? I'm not. Anyway, continue your point. I'm sorry. I was, I was, but anyway, but anyway, he was saying, you know, he expects you know the Saints to play a lot of zone with these you know corners. I'm like, eh, I mean, it really don't even matter. Like we can play <laughs> zone with P. Rob and and King Crowley or Keith Washington or P. J. Whatever. It ain't gonna look good, no. especially if we don't get pressure. Like especially if we are not getting pressure on the quarterback, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be pitch and catch for uh, That's it. Stafford. Like he's just gonna stand back there. He's tall, big arm, and he gonna put it out there. Oh, he gonna sling it. He's he's yeah. he's he's slinging that thing like fifty yard attempt. Like it's it's coming. Um, just talk like if we if we flip sides. Um talking about the Saints offense going against the pack or excuse me, the, the Lions defense. Um, we talked about how, I mean, I remember when I was talking about how the offense facing the Raiders should be a, a get right game, but, <laughs> but they, they played okay against the Packers. I'll give them that. And I really think that, listen, you know, we, we don't condone and we're not saying that we're happy that Andres Pete got injured. But I will say I think you will see better O-line play with Easton being at left guard and Ruiz being at right guard. Like, we saw it in the Packers game. Like, it just seemed like – it just seemed different. Um, Right. And so I think that's a plus to look for. Here's the thing about Matt Matt Patricia's defense. Um, Jeff Okuda has been absolutely fucking terrible this season. Like, he's been bad, and he was a top – he was picked third overall. I loved him coming out. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's not clicked, whatever, but he's just been getting roasted by offenses. Matt, my, my worry in this game – because in theory, this should be a game that Sean should focus on the run, use Murray, use Alvin. Um, but because of the defense that Matt Patricia plays, he plays a very – Defense where it's rush, three man rush, um, three man rush, and he invites, he he encompasses bend but don't break, 
And so I could see if, she, like, Sean game plan, he's like, oh, they're only going to rush three? Oh, then Drew's going to have time. Like, right. it, like, and I, I just see it unfolding. Like, in theory, this should be a game that Drew and the Saints should dink and dunk their way all up and down the field. This should be a big AK game. And when they, if they win and if they get in the red zone, they have to score touchdowns. Like, if they can do that, I like they give themselves a chance because Matt Patricia's defense invites that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, and I honestly, like, I think the Saints offense right now where it's at is the, is the perfect setup for that. You know, I, yes. I, do, I do think if you look at week one, week two, and week three, you saw the accuracy of Drew Brees get better. Why was the accuracy off? Everybody has a theory. Was it the arm? Is it his feet? Is it, you know, the lack of chemistry with the players? Could have been all of that. Mike Lombardi may be saying that he has an abdominal issue. Like, no, no one knows. issue, like, nobody knows. But I'm just saying you've seen a pattern of it improving slightly week to week. So I think that pattern does continue. I think his chemistry with EJ uh, – uh, <clears throat> sorry, with uh, Emmanuel Sanders does improve. Has that's true, and I think that's that's huge. That's, that's huge. Just not an A game. That's huge going for for like if they want to turn it around when you know Mike Thomas comes back and Drew is on you know on the same page with both bro, of them. Bro, I swear I predicted that. Like, go listen to I don't know which episode it was, but probably back in August or J- July, I said Saints fans don't trip out when Emmanuel Sanders only has like five catches over the first two or three weeks. Like, don't trip. It is going to take time. We've seen this before. So, I think you're going to see Emmanuel, uh, you know, Emmanuel Sanders really step it up. Jared Cook is out. Is like, Jared Cook out is like a big one because he's like low-key the big play threat. Yes. In a passing game. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you look at the average depth of target that he had last year and this year, he was like the only guy catching deep balls. You know what I'm saying? This, Which is weird for a tight end, but that's just you, the way the yeah. offense is. Yeah. So, him being out is kind of huge as far as like, Big plays, you know, the big plays we can get outside of, you know, uh, AK. So we're really going to be dependent on AK to just, like, keep doing what he's doing, like, breaking tackles, like, break the tackles, bro. <laughs> it just – I think what frustrates me – what what frustrates me watching them play offense is, like, there are times where it is so, telega- to- so telegraphed of, like <sighs> – and it's just, like, it, AK is just put in, like, no man's land. Like, ba- like it's basically like they they throw it out like on a, on a little flat route or swing it out, and it's like, you know, he's like eight yards, nine yards to make a first down, and it's like Sean is like, go do it, Negro, like figure it out, <laughs> like. And, 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 right. And I don't I don't know where that comes from, and it, at times I'm like, man, is Sean kind of losing it? Like I I get it, like the offense isn't where it needs to be or whatever, but like that's just not creative. And, and, yeah, and not- you know, and look, I mean, Sean Payton, when he draws up plays, you know, Drew Brees has, you know, a, you know, full access to the entire play sheet. And even within plays, he has, he goes into the, with like two or three plays. Within those plays, he has like a dozen outlets. But, you know, for some reason, I mean, when you look at it, most defenses so far this season have been just playing cover two. They played two deep. And they basically say the defense is just going to, you know, get up and tackle because the Saints are going to throw it underneath. So that's just basically how uh, defense has approached the Saints. Now, in the past, when defenses played cover two, two the Saints yeah. would kill them. Kill them because they would just attack they, the middle. They attack the middle and get, a, get those crosses, those posts yep. that go over and bring the middle line back and they'll go between the middle line back and the deep safety and yep. – and just annihilate them. It was a it was a, a, it was a huge thing when when Meacham and when uh, oh, Jeffrey Henderson were, were on the team. Kill him, Jimmy Graham. Kill yeah. him. I like used to kill him with it. And but it just hadn't really been there the past year or two. And we've seen it. We've seen it really play out this year. They've looked for the looks. Like Drew Brees mentioned, like hey, we had two or three plays drawn up last week. It was there, but we just couldn't get to it. It's like why? I don't know. Like I don't know if you look mm. at the tape. You see, you see Emmanuel, Emmanuel Sanders, he split the strong safety and the deep safety, and he's coming over, but then the pocket's all muddy, and Drew Brees, he isn't set, so he just hits AK, 
And then AK goes for like 50, 55 yards. You know what I'm saying? So it's right. like, okay, it's not a bad play. You got, you know, you got a touchdown out of it. But it's like, why are we hitting these plays anymore? And uh, you know, uh, I was listening to uh, you know New Orleans Dot Football podcast with uh, you know I do Kev and Nick Underhill, and I completely agree with this. I think it's kind of a combination of not so much of Drew's arm strength, but the fact that his mobility has decreased with age more than anything. Not mobility like running around like, you know, Patrick Mahomes or whatever, but his mobility inside the pocket. Like, you remember, like, Drew Brees was, like, the best. Like, it was – I used to love it. Like, he'll, he'll, mm. he'll hit the top of his back step. You know, the pass rushes are just coming out on the yeah. edge, and then he just slides boom, in that boom, pocket. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, man. Boom, and then the ball come flying out. He just it's, – it's not there, that mobility, the way he maneuvers the pocket. He kind of just steps back. And then he just plants his feet and he shoots and he fires. And I don't, I just don't know if that's a mobility. Like if you get, like right now, it has to be perfect. It has can't be. be, it can't be, you know, one of the guards or maybe a left tackle, he leaks a pass rush and Drew Brees, he catches a, you know, he maneuvers and gets another 0.5 or a second to make that throw. It has to be perfect. So like as soon as the offensive lineman loses, the play is pretty much dead. No, so it's, it's, that it's makes, done. Yeah, it's done. It's done. And, and that makes the – it's hard to play offense like that, it's, especially in the league today where – Oh, my God. There's defensive no way. Defensive linemen, defensive linemen are far more athletic than offensive linemen by far. It's dead. It's dead. And that – I mean, that's when we talked about it, I think, on the last show, just the, the renaissance of – I mean, not you – know, obviously not every black quarterback is a mobile quarterback, but you look at Lamar – Patrick Mahomes, you know, Russell Wilson, um, Deshaun Watson, you know, Josh Allen, wh- whoever, like, you know, a mobile quarterback, the ability to extend plays outside of structure when the blocking may not be there, you know, whatever, and still be able to either scramble out and convert a first down or scramble out and complete a pass on the field. It's so huge in it's today's so huge NFL. Because you're forcing one – you're forcing uh, you're forcing defensive linemen to move, and second, you're forcing coverage. You know, co- defensive backs to cover more than two and a half seconds, which we yeah. already talked about is yeah. a law. Like it's they law. just can't do it. It's just not like the NFL isn't set up for them to lose after that because you can only you can only put your hands on a wide receiver. You know, for the first what five yards. Then after that, it's you know if you touch him, you know you get a red yellow flag. So. So, you know, these guys that are able to move around a little bit and buy time or just – even if it's just like a bootleg like like uh, like Rodgers was doing, you know, that's just it, – it puts pressure on the defense. And, you know, where we have a quarterback now is just not able to execute anything like that. Not saying he can't execute the offense and be like a good quarterback, but it just has to be perfect. Everything has to kind of line up and all the stars and planets have to line up perfectly. It's very – it's very similar to how, and it, it's very similar to like the last couple of years of Brady in New England, mm-hmm. of, yep. how it, of how it, he, it needed to be perfect for it to align, um, for it to work. I am, the one thing that does excite me, it sounds weird to say excite me, but the Saints invested a third round pick in Adam Troutman. Like mm-hmm. he's, he's going to get time and we're going to see, you know, where he is as a player. Like, I mean, obviously that's unfair. He's a third round pick. He's a rookie, but he's for sure going to get time um, on Sunday. Obviously I think, you know, some, you know, Josh Hill is going to do his thing because Josh Hill always does his thing. Yeah, he gets his plays. Gets plays. But I think we're going to see a lot of, you know, Adam Troutman and, and see what he can do um, in the offense. Uh, Cause I feel, cause where Drew, cause where Drew is right now, you know, it has to be like I hate saying it, but like it has to be like in his line of sight. It has to yeah. be in the middle of the field where he can see it. Troutman and, and a, that's why that's why AK is you know he, he gets so many targets. Um, yeah. Trout, Troutman can be that for him too. Um, and honestly, like with the way that Matt Patricia plays or he calls defenses, um, like this could be like a it should be a really good game for Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders should be able to do well 
against the Lions cornerbacks, whether it's yeah. Okuda, whether it's uh, old boy Trufant. from Trufant from formerly from the Falcons, um, and the, like even the linebackers on the Lions, like they aren't they aren't that you know like, they got Jamie Collins, but he hasn't had a great year. Uh, Jared Davis has been a terrible first round pick for the Lions. Um, oh. Like and I and I couldn't I couldn't stand his film out of Florida, so that doesn't like he I saw his film in Florida and I was like, oh, this is Stephon Anthony 2.0, and that's exactly what he's been. Um, so this again, and, and I after the last two weeks, I, I I'm I'm done saying this. It should, in theory, it should be a good game where the office should be able to do something, but who fucking knows at this point? Who knows? I don't. I don't. Right, and you know, I, and I've said it. I know people tired of hearing it on this podcast, but I've said it. Many times. It's October. You know, Saints typically start cooking around this time. They start trying to make you a believer. Uh-oh. You know, you start like, oh, okay, okay, they started doing a little something. Uh oh. But you know, like us, but we don't know. We don't know. This is a new year. Drew Brees is old. You know what I'm saying? So you know, this could be a different year. But this is the time the Saints kind of start cooking. I'm interested to. Uh, what about the Detroit Lions running backs? They got you know they got eight. You it's a over there. it's a mess. So they got they got they got all day all day AD. They have Curry on Johnson, uh, yeah. and then they have DeAndre Swift, and he's just not really in the rotation. So it's been yeah, like this that's weird. Uh, Swift been kind of disappointing so far. Huge, 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 and I lo- and I loved him out of Georgia. Like yeah, love love his take. I thought that was a great pick. I was like, all right, Lions, that's a nice pick. But he hasn't had a great start to his rookie season, and they just have a, like a platoon of guys. But I will say, out of all out of all the linebackers, the linebackers that's been the most consistent and has looked the best um, has been <laughs> Adrian Peterson, bro. Like all day, yeah. He could still pop one, bro. Bro, <laughs> like I could see him popping one off, like for like would, thirty or forty for sure. Like, Easy. Like, don't be surprised if he just catch that edge and he just. Does that, you know, you know how AP just catches that edge and he just does that run, you know? Where he just like, like, like that giddy up like a horse. Like, yeah. like he, <laughs> <laughs> it's always reminded me of like, whenever I see him run, he's like, you gotta, gotta and get up like, to. Like, you hear that. Cluck, cluck, cluck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, but that's, I mean, that's pretty much it, man. Like, I, I will say this. I think Ryan and I are gonna record the, the recap, you know, pod the end of Sunday um there's the potential that there may be a like comedy of things that we're just laughing about uh (laughs) just because I've I've seen I've seen PJ I've I've seen PJ man I've 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 seen uh um who uh P-Rob you know I I just I know what it looks like and so it there just may be some jokes on the way. Oh, oh, they will be jokes. Um, so, bruh, Chris, <laughs> Chris said he's fed up. Shout out to the, the one of our youngest, <laughs> youngest Saints fans. <laughs> white, white, white wealth Chris. Chris said he's done. <laughs> Chris, but man, Chris been a Saints fan about four years, man. <laughs> he said this, this too much. <laughs> Uh, this was up, dude, man. That's my dog. Chris, Chris, yeah, Chris is up. Like, Saints, Saints would have been wild, boy. Trump, oh, bro, Trump about it... to, to die, man. Trump out you. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I mean, here's the thing, like, if, and I, we spoke about this, uh, you know, in text messages, but I'm not, like, we're not, Ryan and I are not saying we don't have quote-unquote fandom anymore, but man, it's, it's, I think you said it best. It's a hobby. Like, this has become, like, a good, like, hobby. And in the past, it was, I hate to say it like this, but it was, like, a way of life. Like, if you're a Saints fan, like. Right. Like, it was, you know, the fan, it, fan is, a, you know, is a root word for fanatic. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were fanatics. I live and die with the Saints. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know, I'm still a fan. I'm still hardcore. I still watch every game. I still follow the news. I still, I'm like no different. I'm really no different as far as like what I do as a fan, but I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fanaticized by it. I'm just, you know, I'm just looking at it like a story, you know, a story I'm interested in, like reading a book or something, you know, 
I love the reality TV show of the NFL. You know, it's like a reality TV show. I just love, I just enjoy it. And I mean, and at this point, that's all that's all we can do. Also, can I can I give a shout out to our boy Kev, who basically like he gave the the walkthrough of how the game's gonna start on on Sunday on Twitter today. <laughs> And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it verbatim because he ain't never been wrong. I got to find it. Because I'm like, did you go into the future and read this? Because that, that, was, that was so on point. I'm like, that's going to happen. It was written. It was written. Uh, I, I'm scro- this, is, this is terrible podcasting for, for what it's worth. Um, but basically, uh, I, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. He, so he was he was replying to one of my tweets, and he said, I swear, bruh, Sean going to defer. Detroit gets the ball. First pass incomplete, incomplete to Amendola. Second, second down, sack by Trey. Third and 18, 46-yard <laughs> completion to Galladay. And the timeline going to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> you can already oh like I just want to go in, bro you can already see that shit you just like these niggas third, third 18 for real third 18 oh man what was that uh what game was that oh never mind that was a whole game but uh, any thoughts on the rest of the league man I uh, mean, I haven't. It's crazy because I really, I haven't even paid it. Can we talk about this? L- listen, Roger Goodell. Uh, he, he, uh, this is the, the part of me where the, the the fanatical does still come out a little bit because I'm still a little, I'm still salty. So Roger Goodell suspends Sean Payton for a year for basically not doing anything wrong, basically just being an arrogant asshole. That's who Sean is, right? Mm-hmm. So the Tennessee Titans, before they played the Vikings this past Sunday. I don't know who knew, but I'm pretty sure that Mike, Dr- Mike Drable knew that at least one of his players had tested positive for COVID. At least one. Right. So instead of putting that player on the COVID reserve list and making that, not having that player play and quarantining that player, it, it's funny because my girl has basically said that especially when he had, like, the mustache, she's always told me, she was like, man, Mike Drable just looks like like a racist cop that, like, pulls black people over and, and, and calls them niggers. And, and I was like, oh, my God, he does. And, like, I've never I, – it's it, I've never shook that. So his tough talking ass, like, I, I can't – he annoys me. It, I'm sure it went something like, oh, corona. Oh, I ain't no corona. Like, oh, get, get your ass Can out he there. play? Like, I'm, is he showing symptoms? <laughs> right? No. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Go to chat. And so now almost the entire Tennessee Titan organization, like the football team, has contracted it. Even took out my boy Correa. Corona's got Correa now? Come on, Co- I can't even be mad at COVID regarding what, what, what happened last night. So let, let, me, let me back that up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> if you know, you know. And so – my point is that that is the utmost negligence, arrogant, and what Sean Payton do didn't put anyone at risk. Contracting corona could end someone's life in the right. worst case example. And now this entire team, oh, not entire, that's hyperbole, but most of the team has contracted this. And what? Like, I, it, that is infuriating to – if you're a fan, period, regardless of who you're a fan of, that should be infuriating to you. But if you're a Saints fan, that's doubly more infuriating because it's like, to me, you need, you need to suspend Mike Drable for the entire season. No? Like, am I wrong? Meanwhile, meanwhile they're handing out $100,000 fines for, you know, not wearing a, you know, you know, taking your mask off for a minute during the game. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, they're threatening draft picks now. You know, if you don't wear your mask or you don't wear your mask properly during games. You know what I'm saying? And this dude here, you know, he got players on the field with goddamn COVID-19. Not the Rona. 
when you have a protocol in place, like there's a protocol in place where this is what we're going to do if this happens. You and he saying? completely like, disregarded it. Yeah, that's just crazy to me. But if, if, is anything going to really happen to him? No. Uh, not. No. It's, it's but, like, you know, outside of that, you know, I mean, I know there was some kind of, you know, there was a lot of shock on the timeline, like, oh, Lord, you know, you got COVID. Players are going to catch COVID-19 during the season. We talk Coaches about it, are going to catch it. It's going to happen. I'm, I'm, matter of fact, I'm shocked it's only been so little so far. I'm yes. sure there's been more. It's just had been – it's been very tucked under the rug. You know what I'm saying? Like, just somehow some of these players just kind of disappear during the, during the week. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's just conspiracy theory. I ain't going to say nothing. But, you know, I, I just find it interesting. Uh, some players just kind of disappear during the week. They're fine, and then, oh, they pop up with a tight hammy or something, but I don't know. We'll see. But uh, that said, it's going to happen. So don't be shocked when players, you know, play, games are going to get suspended. Games are going to get pushed back. It's just going to happen, man. Like, it's a pandemic. Everybody going to get it. I'm not saying everybody going to get it, but a lot of people go get like, it. A lot of people will. A lot of <laughs> A lot of fucking people. Especially win. if you're not in the bubble. You're not like the NBA and you're in a bubble. you going to get it. You know, somebody going to get it. Yes. Um, I, don't even, I don't even know what games besides, you know. I don't you got know. The, Chiefs, the Chiefs and the uh, Patriots. That should be kind of interesting. I don't, I don't want to talk about the Chiefs, man. <laughs> After some of those throws he threw on man, Monday night. <laughs> man, f- man, forget my homes. Put some respect on Spags' name, man. Spags had Spags held Lamar to 97 Yo. yards. Yo. <laughs> if, so and here's the thing. Here's the frustrating thing as a Saints fan. I'm watching that game, and obviously I, I, we talked about it on the podcast like, I, I had questions about the Ravens passing game going into the season. Like, I still – like, they didn't do – they, they did nothing to add to it. Like, they just rolled out the same guys. They, they, added, they added the, the rookie from, from Texas uh, who returned it back. But, like, they, they brought off – so, I'm watching the game, and the Spaz got basically, like, a second-year corner who they took in the fifth round last year and a rookie – and they out here balling, bro. I'm like, we we got Marshawn and, and Janoris, and they just just struck. Uh, it's it that like little stuff like the little stuff like that is kind of infuriating to watch when you like put in that context. What's amazing to me, uh, I was listening uh, listening to Greg Cosell, uh, who's been on the podcast twice. Go back yeah, and I- listen if if you haven't. Go back and listen. Uh, but he uh, he said, you know, Spagnuolo ran ran a cover zero eleven times during that game. Which what, so to, which, you know, it's just I just it's, that, it's unheard of. Zero that's nuts. Times. That's nuts. Because so so, so is, if you don't know what cover zero is, that means you were bringing the house. That means there is no one, it, no one. To, there's no safety in the back to protect. So if you get beat, you know, it doesn't matter. Like it's a touchdown. So that, that tells you that Spag, Spags in the Chiefs defense does not, did not trust Lamar as a passer to, to make the play. That's what that tells me. Whew. Which, which is, it sounds pretty damning when, when you say it like that. Yeah. And even watching the game, like I, 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 didn't, I didn't watch the whole game. I watched like at least the, the first half. It was very apparent to me. I said, man, Lamar still has a ways to go as a passer. And I know and that that said, like it still taking Davenport over over him was dumb as fuck. But he exactly. has a he has a ways to go um as a passer. Which is is just kind of crazy to say about the you know MVP of the league last year. You know what I'm saying? Nuts. Like, that's just crazy. But that's just how good he is as you know, as a total player. He's just a you know, that you know, transformative of a player, but he does he didn't improve that. He has improved year to year, but it's a it's a steep climb. You know what I'm saying? He, it's it, it's it's the point where defenses, like smart defenses, go in saying we want the quarterback to throw, and that's just never like it, that's not ideal. You never want that. <laughs> like now, we want the quarterback to throw the ball. <laughs> that's okay. So let's take that point, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna expand it a little bit. Remember that Eagles game that that write up that Peter King wrote. About what Sean wanted 
in that game, what did yeah. he want? Throw the ball, Wentz. <laughs> what did he want? We want, Rich, we want Wentz, Wentz to throw to, the ball. To beat them. <laughs> Fast forward a couple of years later. Man, listen, I said it before, bro. I was like, something about Wentz. And it's like, oh, man. I don't know, man. It's like I look at him like, mm, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> something is something to it. But you know what? Last year, he brought me back. Like, Those last year, when I – when I those saw last games where he had like the end, with he, all the Eagles had all the injuries. injuries, I was just like, you know what? He's showing something. He he just dropping his nuts. He's showing something, man. But man, like I watched that Bengals uh, <gasps> game. I mean, Eagles Bengals. That was the worst game I've ever seen in my life, man. <laughs> Long, no, like nobody wanted to win. It was just oh my god, that was like and, uh, that, that was torture, bro. That's too many. Can we say Joe Joe Burrow? Can, no, Joe hit. been pressured. Joe been pressured say forty two times in two weeks, bro. Say it, man. Forty two times in two weeks. Uh, did you see that hit he took? Yes. Like, can you imagine you taking that hit? <laughs> like, just you. Like you be like you be in the ER. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, and this man got a, and he popped up and played full because he's tough like that. You know what I'm saying? But he, he built different. Like, he built different. Like, Man, you, that dude gonna end up IR on the on the, on the IR. Like seriously, say that's the thing. Can we? Is there a way that maybe we can entice the the Bengals to trade for Andre Speed? Like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> like we gonna make it better. <laughs> Listen, Ryan, I'm being a little selfish right now. All right, <laughs> don't don't judge me. Um, I mean, trying to think any anything else. Uh, who are the um, the Seahawks playing? Uh, they're playing. They're playing a cupcake. Oh uh, shit! The hell are they playing? I don't know. It's a cupcake team. I'm pretty sure. Can we let, let's talk? Let's talk about this a little bit, bro. Let's say let's say you wake up. You woke up today's Friday, right? Let's say you woke up Friday morning, and you're a Jets fan. Like, 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 what do you do? Like, 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 what do you do? I would, I man. I would literally, I would completely check out. <laughs> like, I, I've, I've lived those, man. But even like, even the Saints, for the most part, like during my lifetime, for the most part, they've put together competitive teams. You know, outside of the Mike Dickey years, and you know, like one or two years with Jim Moore. And the Katrina year, like they've been competitive, like you know what I'm saying. So, like they they they're in the in the Mike Dickler point of you know, <laughs> your Saints way and old Saints way. Like they're in the Mike Dick era where you just want it to end. Like I want it to end. It's a joke. Everybody knows it's a joke. Just end this, man. Like you're gonna be picking number one over number one and number two. They will be picking there. Just a debacle. Just it's a debacle. It makes it pisses me off, and I don't even care about the Jets. Right? Like how how crazy is that? Like the fact that Adam Gates did not get immediately fired last night, it's mind blowing. Get Greg Williams in there. Greg Williams, he he come in there, and he gonna get you right. He gonna coach a couple games. He go, you know, you'll be five. But then again, you know, hey, maybe they don't want to win five games. You know? Just, no, 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 no. Just ride Gates out. <laughs> Because I'm looking at the schedule, I'm like, damn, they you, might not win one game. They you posted it, bro, game. and I was like, oh. the only game that I, I – and I, I said, like, maybe they get one against – The Dolphins. Yeah. The Dolphins. Maybe. Maybe. Because I mean, the Dolphins frisky, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I think we, I think we covered it all. Uh, yeah, Seahawks play the Dolphins, by the way. Okay, okay. When, so, you know. Get get our boy, get our boy Tua in there, man. I know, man. I know, I know. You know. Yeah, I mean, Tua gonna get through there. Tua gonna get in there. Right now, they're trying to like, oh, we're gonna, you know, we're still competing and all that shit. <laughs> but you know, they gonna be, you know, I don't, what's the schedule? I mean, what what they're looking like now? One and three, maybe. Yeah, I think they're one and three. And I mean, they gonna get to the point where they're like, you know, I don't know, one and you know, two and maybe. Two and six or some shit, and you gonna see two and get up in there. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, NFL. I mean, it's been fun. You know, I mean, uh, Russell Wilson. He's you know he's like the early MVP guy, uh, which makes sense. He, I think he deserves that. 
you know, if he keeps it up. But his Seahawks defense is going to catch up oh. with him. Yeah, it's, it's going to catch up with them. It's going to catch up with them quick. Like, they they are, yeah, not – not good. What what are what do you think about about Dallas? It's fascinating, man, because I picked them at the end, beginning of the year. I think I thought they were going to have a top five offense, probably the number one offense, and they're on track for that. Uh, they, you know, Dak been putting up four fifty a week, scoring, scoring with his legs, scoring with his arm. But but uh, did you but did you know that he doesn't make plays? Uh, <laughs> Like, like, what is Jerry doing? Like, what the quote he said about Dak? Like, hey, bro, like, I, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, what is that? I, I know, I know, my man Patrick, my man, my man Patrick Clipboard. I know he will speak on it right now. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, what's up with that? Like, that's crazy to me. Like, I, and trust me, I am not no Dallas Cowboys fan by far. Like, I do not at all. Like, I'm not even a big Dak, like, crazy Dak fan. You know what I'm saying? I got my problems with him too. But it's just like, 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 what, what do you want? Like, what do you want from a quarterback? Like, you know what I'm saying? Is he the best quarterback in the league? No, he's not. But you could definitely put him in the top echelon of young quarterbacks. Without question. Without question. You know what I'm saying? He, he's durable. He, he, he's great with his arms, great with his legs, scores, smart, hardworking, not involved in off the field shenanigans. Like, like what? Like what more? What more do you what more do you want? And it's like, what you gonna find better? You know what I'm saying? Just because you found him what in the fourth round, that's not gonna happen again. You know what I'm saying? They, so, they gonna put they gonna put the red rifle out there? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Man, he almost got on the field versus the Falcons. He did he had that one play, you know. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's 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 fascinating, man. Their defense their defense struggling too. Got my boy Mike Nolan, man. Send Mike Nolan back. <laughs> Mike Nolan maybe, back. Maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's what's missing from the defense. <laughs> maybe Mike Nolan was calling the plays and we just never knew it, bro. Like, man, listen, he, he was never a good DC anyway. He sucked with the Falcons. He was there, but he's a coach. great, great positional coach. A great position coach, you know. So, you know, who knows what's happened with that? But yeah, other than that, man, the league, the league, been fun, you know, fun as usual, you know. So, and if you're a Saints fan, if you're still super, super like plugged into the season, I, I know I'm getting a lot of tweets saying that people are close to you know, don't push me because I'm close to the, the. <laughs> just jump off, just, just just disconnect. I don't know what you're waiting for. Look, listen, listen, as a Saints fan, man, look, I'm not saying this is the year, but the day was going to come eventually where. You know, this little, this little run, Sean Pedro Breeze, it ends, man. Like, it's going to end. We would love it to end, like Peyton Manning, you know, getting a Lombardi, you know, limping off the field like he did. <laughs> we would love it to happen like that, but that is so rare. It's so rare. It rarely happens. Most things end in, you know, controversy, and it's usually ugly. So... And I'm not saying that's where we at. I don't know. I don't know. But just kind of ride the wave and kind of see where it goes. Uh, I don't think – I think it's kind of working out perfectly for Drew because I think what we've seen so far, I think this is absolutely his last year. Yeah, man. I think, like, I was talking to Nick about it. I was like, man, well, I bet he kind of regretted – kind of regret coming back. Like, man, he could be on NBC or something just chilling, getting a couple M's, you know what I'm saying, just talking – Ultra day and full shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, we could have had TB12, bro. <laughs> Slaying like, that thing. TB12 or something, you know what I mean? I think and it would have been fine, you know, because he would have left on his own, you know, but, he, you know, he's just that type of competitor, so he wants to try to push it to the end. And I think he still has enough to where he's going to have a good season, and then he's going to hang it up, and he's going to go to the Hall of Fame, you know? And I think it works out for him because – Tom Brady, this is not going to be his last year. He's going to play at least another year. Nope. Yeah, for sure. And I, I don't think Drew Brees wanted to compete with Tom Brady to get into the Hall of Fame. I think they both would have made it at the same time, but you don't want to, you know. You Tom don't want to go. Would, in. Yeah, you, you know, don't want to go in there with Tom Brady. <laughs> no. He, no, like bro. He's going to dominate. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's going to be the guy that night. So, you know, I think it'll work out for Drew, and then he'll go to the Hall of Fame. 
And for the Saints, it's just gonna be like, man, darkness coming, man. This winter is coming. It's, so it's gonna then, be cold out chill. Ooh. So then, the Saints have a, you know, since we're on this topic, the Saints have a fascinating decision. You know, yes. we kind of look into the future. They got Taysom. They they re up Taysom, and I, I don't want to hear about fucking people on their 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 Taysom picks or their, their Taysom takes. And then they only signed Jameis for one year. They know what they see in practice. They know what they see in practice and, and the practices. They know what they saw in like this, the training camp. So it's going to be very fascinating if this is Drew's last year, which I, I agree with you that it is, of who is like, do they try to bring Jameis back, you know, with the contract in the off season, or are they going to give the reins to Taysom and just say, it's going to be a fun, we're going to try this experiment and see, how, like, I, I don't know, man. We don't, we don't have the answers. Also, I mean, a, a big factor into that too is like we don't know where the Saints are going to finish. Like yeah. we we know more than likely that they're not going to put themselves in a position to have a first a high first round pick. They just it's, no. it's, it's just not going to happen. So you know that as the the your it was your pin your pin tweet for a while. This may be a seven and nine season where whatever, and the the thoughts of you know just or. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, maybe the kid yeah. from freaking uh, North Dakota State. Like, it's, so who the next guy is to me is truly going to be a very fascinating thing because it, 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 we are going to get that answer next season, and I think that's yeah. a fascinating thing. The answer is going to come. Whether it's Jameis or Taysom or, you know, Sam Darnold, who I think will be available. Uh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You know, it's, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting, man. And, uh, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's too early to really talk about it right now, but that's something as a Saints fan, you just got to prepare yourself for. It's going to be a whole different thing next year. And this thing going to continue, man, year after year. Yeah, man. So, it, it, NFL ain't going to stop. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going to stop, man. Like, we just kind of reboot and move on. Um, so, yeah, another quick point. Cornerbacks have, get, cornerbacks have gotten paid. Jalen got paid. Oh, man. White got paid. Marlon Humphrey, who was in the same draft class, was taken much lower than Marshawn Lattimore, just got paid. With Marshawn's play, besides week uh, one, uh, um, I don't know. Like, it's reached pattern point. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Played great as a rookie, second year, started off with that, what, that Tampa Bay game. Okay, he's still young, which he is still young. I mean, he's, what, 23? Um, That's nuts that he's that young. That's crazy to me. <laughs> young. Like, he's still a kid. In my view, I'm 38. I still view 23 as a kid. He's still a kid to me. Uh, and so you want to brush it off, but, like, man, you four years. Like, he's an NFL veteran at this point. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, the fact that he's still it's frustrating because it's not it's not a talent thing. That's what's frustrating. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he's getting beat because he's not fast or not quick or not, you know, or not fluid or anything like that. He he gets beat because of mental errors and it's yes. like yes. Is he, that you? Is, is that you? Like is that you? Is that who you are as a player? I don't know. I don't I don't know, man. And I Back when in the off season we said like you got to pay him, and I still think ultimately they they have to pay him. But I do, I do, I do. But, he, I, but you go ahead and face uh, with the, filling that contract out. You go back. Uh, I might regret this, huh? Uh, yeah. I don't think I might regret it. Yeah, it's it's a real uh, fascinating sub point. Last question before we get out of here. Um, we were talking about quarterbacks. We we're talking about next season. Gun to your head. Who do you think the starting quarterback of the Saints is next season? Gun to head. Gun to head, man. I think they figure out a way to keep Jameis Winston in the building, and yep. I think he's the starting quarterback. Yep. That that. And, it, and if if the Saints get if the Saints don't take advantage of October and say we go, say we we you know say we lose to the Lions then lose to the Chargers, and it's getting bad. You know what I'm saying? It's looking like 
playoffs are looking very, very unlikely. I think you're going to start, you know, you, you, I think you're going to see Jameis Winston during the season. How? I don't know. I mean, Drew Brees, you know, he needs a weak rest, you know, injury, whatever. I don't know. He might need a, he might need a, need a back of Ottomy. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. But they're going to need to take a look at. Like, look, un- under the hood and see, like, how, yeah. how he looks in the Saints offense. Right, which would be, it would be stupid not to. It would be extremely stupid. Not to just take a look to see what you got. Uh, but, yeah, gun in my head. I, I also, I just want to rant. I, I need to rant about two firsts, bro. Oh, oh, oh. I need oh. to rant, man. Like, Come on, man. I'm, I'm ready I, for I, it. I, I'm, here, I'm here from my sources that, you know, that he, he you know, he, he didn't really work hard this offseason as far as, like. Sauces. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm just hearing that, you know, he didn't really, like, he didn't put in the work that you would think a guy that's coming into his third season, coming off injury, that you think would. You know what I'm saying? And then he has this elbow injury. They thought it would uh, – Nick on Hill reported that they thought it would be like a short-term, week type of thing. But then it just extended, extended. He finally comes back limited, and then he, you know, he has a toe, a, a toe problem or something. I'm hearing that, you know, he's one of those NFL players that likes to, you know, likes to read a lot and all that stuff, which is – Great, you know, that's nothing wrong with that. You know, I know scouts like to, you know, grumble at that. Like, oh, he thinks he wants to get educated. Like, no, that's great. Like, it was, it was a huge thing. Be, it was a huge thing with Miles Garrett when he came out. Yes, yeah, same thing. And I'm hearing that. You know, I'm hearing that he's kind of one of those type of guys. I just got a bad feeling about two first man. I just think he's one of those guys that might be out the league in a year or two. Like, no, I, I mean, I, it's I was not really into it. He's just, it seems like one of those guys is not really into it. And he I was just going to – You went to a small school. He's just yep. like – he's talented. Like, from a talent standpoint, there's no reason why he wasn't in a, in a uh, you know, in the Big Ten or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So he just strikes me as one of those guys that's just kind of like not really into it, man. Like, didn't really care about the money and all that stuff. Just kind of like – I was just going to ask you, like, how much does he really love football? I don't know. I, I just never got that. I never looked at – when I listen to him, I watch every interview, every presser, I never got like, yeah, this dude here, you know what I'm saying? He fired up. He just seemed like a dude that's kind of like, yep. eh. Hmm. Yep. And maybe that's just me. I'm just trying to nope. make too much into nope. it. Nope. You, 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 absolutely, you absolutely do not. <laughs> like, I'm a, I'm a psych major. Like, I have a degree in psychology. Like, and it's – like, it's, it's, it's easy to tell. Like, he doesn't – like, it has nothing to do against him – like, that's just right. his personality. But right. I, I guess what we're saying, you know, just to be real, is that he's not someone that's a dog. Like, that right. has that, I won't say fire, but he doesn't have, like, that fire just to, like, it's just not there. And I, and I, and I mean, I, I it's, it was such a bad pick. Like, I was not a fan of it. Uh, and, and, it you know, it, and it's like one of those things, like, I, I guess I relate to it. Like, when I, you know, I'm a big dude. I always was a big dude. I played a little football, like Pee Wee and stuff like that. But I always liked football. But I didn't care. I didn't really, I didn't really care for playing it. You know what I'm saying? Get that. Yeah, I wanted, yeah. I wanted, I wanted to draw, read comic books. You know what I'm saying? I, I just like that was me. You know what I'm saying? I, remember, I mean, coaches used to come at me hard at high school. Like, man, we need you on the team. Well, get you on the team. I'm like, man, I don't want to do none of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, want, I want to be at the football games, not playing football. I want to right. be at the games, get up, you know what I'm saying, get numbers and all that shit. You know, I, that's just where I was at mentally. And I, so, I mean, if it's not you, it's not you, Eddie. He strikes me as a guy that just was blessed physically, you know, with amazing talent, but just probably never was really into the whole football thing. So, We'll see how it plays out, man. But uh, yeah, it ain't it ain't looking good. It's looking like, you know, Saints might have fucked up. <laughs> Shocker. Um, it, it, it does, and like we talked about it in, in in the in the preseason or or not preseason, but off season or whatever. Is like this is such a huge year for him in terms of like that fifth year option. There's yeah. no way as the Saints, and I'm sorry, there's no way you can pick that up. Like you have to decline it. Yeah. You yeah. have to, at this point, you have to decline it. He is that dead. is that's terrible. That's damning. And I know Greg Rosenthal hates when teams decline fifth year options because on, honestly, it's just that option, just like like for like guarantee for injury protection. 
but like that, you, they have to. Like he has not shown enough that you know, and that's a that's a big number for like a DN for them to you know whatever. But yeah, man, it's it's not looking good. But I, I'm I'm excited about the offensive line. Like what I saw in limited snaps from Maurice, he he's a greater man. He's yeah. just just out there just punishing people. Yeah. Um, and I think we're gonna see the the the, the you know the we're gonna see the benefits of that when he's in the lineup. Um, yeah. All right, we're gonna stop. We're gonna start rambling. Uh, yeah. so, oh, by the way, I said that, and we'll still talk. But this is a shout out to our guy Kevin Patra. Kevin was going to join us on the show. He was going to, you know, he's a Detroit Lions fan. He lives in that area. Um, and he was going to join us. And he's been on the show before. So if you haven't listened to Kevin, on, you know, you can listen to the past episode where he joined us before. Um, his little man is sick. And so he had to kind of cancel. So just know that, you know, we appreciate that you were going to be on the show, Kevin. Um, and he, you know, he said, like, Yo, I got you guys. Like, I'm going to make it up to you. Take care of your family. Take care of your little man. Everything's good. Um, but I just want to give a shout out to him and let, you know, let, let him know that we appreciate him wanting to be on um, and give, you know, hope that is that his family gets well real quick. Yeah. Much love to Kevin, man. Love that dude. All right, y'all. Um, today's Friday. Enjoy the weekend. Don't stress too much on about Sunday. What's going to happen. Just have New fun. Orleans, New Orleans, man. Y'all in phase three. Let oh. loose. <laughs> what, what, with a mask. And, and social distance. Don't just just be out here. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, Yo, that was good. <laughs> um, have fun. It, enjoy Sunday live. You know, it's it's all fun. Uh, we'll be back Sunday night recapping the game. Yeah. Um, and and have I mean, as rapid re, rapid reaction as it will be. Um, and we'll just keep this going. We'll just keep the thing going, man. All right, peace. Without, we out. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You've got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts.